Good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to uh, Dumb SEO Questions, episode 373. With us tonight, we have uh, Tim and Winston. Um, <laughs> Tim and Winston live uh, at Corby or in Corby, uh, about 100 miles north of London. Um, and um, uh, Tim is CEO of OnlineOwnership.com. He's also a Google product expert in the Google My Business community. Um, David Roseanne is, um, let's see, what are Winston's credentials? Um, David Roseanne is a leading internet marketer. He's based in, um, uh, is it West Sussex? It is West Sussex. Uh -huh. well, yeah, in the sunny south of uh, the UK. Um, he can be found at davidrosam.com. And Tim uh, can be found at onlineownership.com. And Masataki Wasa is webmaster of wasaweb.net, W-A-S-A-W-E-B.net. Uh, Masataki is also webmaster, sorry, he's also a Google product expert. Uh, on the uh, AdSense uh, community. All right, um, let's get cracking. The, the, the first uh, question that we have, uh, uh, it's um, titled um, from Andy Trigg, and it's titled uh, Analyzing uh, Traffic Drops. He said, I've been running uh, invasion based forums for our uh, envision based forums <laughs> for 20 years. Um, all of a sudden, last Tuesday, traffic dropped by 30, 13%. The next day, it dropped further, and the next until after several days, it has dropped almost 50%. I'm completely puzzled as to how that could happen and how to even start trying. Uh, to find out why nothing has changed uh, on the uh, forums at all. Um, all right, I'll, I'll leave it to you guys. I'll throw it open and ask you guys to solve this for uh, Andy. <coughs> um, so, uh, not last week, two, week, two weeks ago, we had. Um, we had there was a core update. Um, I haven't seen anyone specifically mention forums, um, but I would just off the top of my head, so without looking at the URL, I'd probably look at. I'd probably look at the actual forum and the structure. Um, users are they dropping links? Uh, are those links no followed? Um, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, there, there could be quite a lot of reasons in terms of quality why, um, you know, for for um, forum questions, um, why Google may have dropped some stuff. Um, that's just off the top of my head. Thank you, Tim. Um, Anybody else? Has Winston gone to sleep there, Tim? Uh, no. No, he's just behind my neck. Oh, he's uh -huh. about down my back now. Okay. All right. Um, Andy, that, that's all, all, all that we have for you tonight. I'm so sorry. Um, well, I'm not. I'm not. I mean, I'm, I'm. I'm not suggesting for any in any way, shape, or form that Tim Tim hasn't given a good answer. I just thought we'd be able to give him more. Um, anyway, here we are. Chris Green on cal calculating cost per action for search engine optimization. Chris said, "Hi, guys." I have been required to calculate cost per action for SEO for a lead generation site. So the way I'm thinking about calculating it 
is to calculate the difference in year-on-year -year conversions um, with search engine optimization spend. For example, let's say goal completions were 10,000 in the year 2019 and 18,000 uh, in the year 2020, with 20,000 invested in SEO. I like that gig. Um, the difference is uh, an 8,000 increase. So then the search engine optimization cost per action would be uh, total SEO spent 20,000 divided by 8,000 leads, which is $2.50 um, CPA. If you had to calculate CPA, is that how you would do it? Um, probably not. <clears throat> although I'm sure you could uh, do it that way. Um, I've never been asked to do this. Um, I, I would look at the 20,000, um, the $20,000 spent in the year and see how many acquisitions there had been made in the year and work out the cost per acquisition. I would do it that way rather than, rather than, um, compare it with, with the previous year because you're making a calculation on an increase, not the actual acquisition number. So I would, yes, I would say $20,000 this, this year and how many acquisitions there's been and do it that way. Um, you might even want to want to uh, make it over quarters or months and see if that uh, your your CPA is going down. That would be a nice thing if you could demonstrate that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. Let's call it an answer for Chris Green. Um, we really need a. Uh, 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 the manager of an affiliate network or something. All right. Number three on our run list is from JL Favario. He asks, uh, can we ask clients to add reviews to our Google My Business pages again? Um, he goes on to say, anyone know if we can ask clients to add reviews to our uh, Google My Business uh, pages again? He said, I know Google restricted adding new reviews due to the pandemic. So curious uh, to know if it's still in the same place. It's still in place. The answers are in the uh, community answers, I think. Um, Google is reviewing them again, and they never stopped you in the first place. So as Tim says, go for it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. All right, let's go one. Let's go on. You never... So, you, yeah. Yes, so go ahead, Tim. You, you were never stopped from asking for reviews. It's just that they weren't displayed. All the reviews that you gain during COVID will be coming back. But yeah, you know, just yeah, fine. There's not, nothing. Nothing's changed. Just get reviews. Yeah. Cool. All right, Nathan Nikolai Gady um, asked the question. It's titled, "How is this possible to have so many links lost um, in under a month?" and so many created links in, in 30 days. Do these people use backlink building ser services? Um, he said, uh, I went over 200 links and all of them were cloaked or on unre totally unrelated w websites. Um, and no uh, penalty via the Google console. 
Ähm, And uh, I liked Michael Martinez's response, uh, no penalty via the Google console. Sounds like the backlinks um, do not need to be cleaned up. He said, for what it's worth, uh, you're more likely to create a spam profile by only getting links from rele relevant websites. In the natural web, people link without regard for what is relevant to their website topics. They link to whatever they please. Most people don't run wiki sites and Wikipedia has earned millions of links from non-wiki sites. If that were really a problem, we'd have seen uh, Wikipedia hit by a penalty by now. I tell you what, I don't know when Michael Martinez sleeps. Okay, anybody else on, on, on this one? Um, or is it just Michael Martinez's answer? Um, you know, yeah, I mean, if you haven't got a penalty and you've got all these, uh, he hasn't got the dodgy links, hasn't he? Someone. Did he see another site that's lost or has his site lost? No, he hasn't got a penalty. Um, he, he, he said that how has is his possible site to have lost? so many links lost? Oh, that, that's pretty easy because well, it's, it's because look, so firstly, I doubt those are even quality links, but you know, a site can get, um, a shitload of links in, in a variety of ways that absolutely yeah, they have no meaning whatsoever. Uh, if there's a particular image on the site that becomes popular, um, there can be, you know, and it gets used on one of these image sharing things. You can get that, that image URL um, can be shared massively all over the place. Uh, there, there, there's, there's tons of ways, and yeah, those can be discounted and re and, and removed pretty quickly. Um, th there's a whole variety of reasons, but I would probably actually look at the link if it was an actual link coming from a decent source. Well, then I would I, I would probably question why you know that that source removed it. You know, reach out to them. Um, but I'm going to say to you that if there's that many all, you know, removed uh, or, or lost, um, then then that will probably crap anyway. Yeah. Okay. That um, response from Michael Martin is there uh, um, on question four. That's a boot camp in itself, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, totally. Let's go to number five on our run list um, from Pascal Thomas. He said, I'm new in SEO skills and I'm running into three issues. Um, I had a look at these earlier, um, Pascal, and, and look, these are issues that these are just, um, well, anyway, I'll read it out. Um, first paragraph um, was uh, alt text pictures, uh, alt text in pictures, um, and getting the key phrase in, in the title. Um, he said, hello, everyone. Thank you for letting me in. I'm new here and, and also in SEO skills. I'm running into three issues. I can't fix key phrase in the first um, um, paragraph. Two, it says your page has no pictures, but it has three. I don't know what tool would be generating that, that response. Uh, and three, it says I'm, I'm not using key phrases in the high level title, but I, I do with H2 or H3. Well, in that case, you should be using H1. He said, I'm using the latest version of WordPress. 
about a theme and yes hope you guys can help me out thank you um the yes yeah, so these are all these are all yoast um errors or yoast guidance and um yoast and similar seo plugins are a real mixed blessing when you're coming to to write content um i know how to write um optimized content shall we say seo content and i switch all these damn things off because most of the time they tell me things that i don't want to know or disagree with um yoast gives you a, a kind of mechanistic view of how to write content you've got to do this you've got to do that you've got something in the wrong place so on and so forth you've got to write you've got to write content good content and this is where it becomes difficult um if you're not used to writing content then having um having help from a plugin is a good thing it gives you some ideas of what you should be doing but you don't know when to ignore it and there's no there's no reason why you should know how to ignore it so you kind you've you've kind of got to um take my advice not to bother lee i would say leave yoast on but if what yoast is telling you gets in the way of what you want to say what you want to write ignore it um it's really a very old-fashioned way of writing content so write content think of themes think of a theme think of what you're writing about put key phrases in what you're writing but don't worry about how many times you're putting in there putting them in there or whether you're putting them in h1 or h2 or h3 although one thing there I, I guess i would say is that your main key phrase you should be able to get it into your your, your headline your h1 it you know <laughs> if you can't do that then you probably need to question what you're writing about and how you're writing you know the 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 key phrase is your main theme should be your main theme and your headline should be about your main theme you know that's what headlines do um they sh they shouldn't be tricky they shouldn't be old-fashioned advertising type headlines they should they should be they should talk they should say something about what you're going to talk about in the uh in the content so i i hope i'm giving you some some clues here um writing content is is a skill and it's something that you're going to have to work on um i don't know you know if, if you've got um if you've got writing or, or blogging experience and you're trying to grow seo skills onto them or whether you're someone who doesn't normally write at all uh and if you if you're someone who doesn't normally write at all then you've got a you know you've potentially got a, a way to go to write uh, to get writing really good content but i'm going to go back to the to to a piece of advice which people trot out all the time and i and i i don't i don't 100 agree with it but i think as a balance to what yoast is telling you write good content write for people don't write one of these one of those two of those in your h2s and three of those in your first two paragraphs um if you write good content these things should happen naturally but that means that you you need to to get some writing skills um so it, it's it's a difficult one you know I, I don't i don't wholly disagree with yost but personally myself as a writer i switch this stuff off because it's it's noise and a lot of the time it's wrong um and in this case i should i will advise you to ignore all this yeah i agree with david um and i'm just going to throw this as an idea um 
use a screen reader or screen reader simulator and see what your website sounds like. And that gives you another perspective into how your site is structured, how your content is structured, and how it sounds. Because writing, reading, and listening to the written word are very different things. And sometimes just using a screen reader is a bit of a revelation in terms of what you have on the page and how your content sounds like. So it's just an idea, but it is sometimes worth just doing that to see how your page sounds like. Thank you, Masataki. Tim, uh, you're, you're the odd man out. Would you like to add something here or not? Uh, no, it's just, yeah, you've got to take these tools with a pinch of salt. Um, essentially, if I ever got any of them running on a client site, I turn, I turn the visibility off so that clients actually write normally and not for a tool. Good one. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to number six on our run list from Neil Cheeseman. It's titled Bingbot and Googlebot are making too many requests to my website. Um, I read this one uh, earlier in the week. It, it, the first thing that I thought of was that if there's no such thing as making too many requests, a server is there to answer requests whenever it's asked. And um, Bingbot and Googlebot uh, are, are where your business comes from. So uh, the Bingbot and Googlebot should be encouraged to make even more uh, requests. Anyway, he said a few months ago I was getting some 500 errors that uh, it turned out to be the hosting company's own SEO coaching plugin resolved with an update. A few days ago, the, the 500 errors have started recurring intermittently. <coughs> I reported this today to the hosting tech support, and the response I have um, is this. Um, the issue is called by Bingbot and Googlebot. They are making too many requests to your website, which causes load and crashes the server. Um, I guess that's site ground. Um, here are some of the Bingbot requests, which are around 12,000 for today. The question I ask, is it a reasonable assumption that this is the cause of the problem? Um, and Roger Monty said if, if, if it's a shared server. Um, and, and he responded, Neil responded, he said he's got three of his own sites on one server. Um, and he said, uh, no, that's not right for a dedicated server. Um, my dedicated server gets hammered by legit and non-legit bots and keeps on serving. And that's exactly what should happen. Yeah, um, Andrew Halliday, um, I think, makes a good point. It's the last comment that I can see on the um, thing. It's, yeah, the last one. Yeah. Um, it tallies with my experience. Bing Bot is very active. Um, they tend to uh, crawl far more than Google. Um, but I think that that number seems a bit odd. And I think there must be some sort of issue um, in processing um, because 500 errors really aren't good news. And I'm wondering if there's some sort of issue there, whether that's sort of redirect loop kind of thing. Um, Mm. And mm. however much they, however much request they make, I don't think there would be enough to crush a server. Yeah, yeah. The, well, actually, uh, I think it's more likely SiteGround would throttle the server, uh, um, given a, a certain amount of, amount of usage. 
And the thing is with hosting, uh, you know, you get what you pay for. And, uh, um, and I think you'd probably find a, if, you, if you've got three, three uh, um, sites on, on a single server, you're probably better off uh, going to Server Beach or some, somewhere like that uh, and, and, and getting some um, real hardware or, you know, Windows, Windows Azure. Um, and, um, um, you know, put up a virtual server uh, on Windows Azure. Yeah. What I'd be interested to know is the response code because, you know, he mentions 500. Um, yeah. You know, are they all responding to 200 or not? Otherwise, you know, well, other than the 500. Yeah, I, I, I just assumed for, from what he said that, that, that it was um, 503, yeah, come back again later. Yeah, but um, just wondering whether the all others, sort of non 503s, are 200 or not, or, or three or four. Um, because if it's something else, then that might tell you there's something going on server, if that makes sense. And if it's 200, lots of requests for 200. In a sense, that makes sense, right? Yeah. But if you have sort of 301, 302s, lots of them going in a loop, for example, or they're crawling something that doesn't exist, then those are times I think you, you, you want to investigate further. If it's just 200s, 304s, and 503s, then you, know, you probably want to look at another server. Yeah. OK. Sorry I'm so slow tonight, guys. Brain's not functioning. Um, Here's number seven on our run list. Uh, it's from Emma Schwartz. Um, it's uh, titled Google Bot Does Not uh, Yet Support HTTP2. HTTP um, Emma Schwartz said that uh, goes on to ask, uh, or goes on to say, I'm getting an error in the search console saying that a number of my posts and pages are displaying a no index tag. Uh, these pages are not set to no index. Uh, any idea what could be causing this? This is happening on two websites. I've checked the source code, and the pages are definitely not set um, to uh, no index. Um, Jessic um, suggested it was um, a, 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 a Google Search Console glitch. Um, um, Michael Martinez um, sort of posted right towards the end, it's the uh, third one from bottom, um, where a Google has confirmed that Googlebot does not yet support HTTP2. Yeah. I mean, that's not, I mean, that's, yeah. I don't think that's unusual. Um, so if the server only responds in H2, then that's a problem. I mean, most browsers um, do work with H2. Um, so in terms of human visitors, that's not a problem. But a lot of bots aren't making requests in H2, and I don't think they can handle. Yeah. Mm, I can't get down on, on, on my uh, uh, display. All right, we'll, we'll leave that one there for Emma and uh, if it's not enough, please ask, and we will do it again next week. <clears throat> this one from Marina Fiore Kirby. Uh, Marina says, has a question. It's titled, I do not want my page to be found organically. Um, Marina said, uh, hi, everyone. I've joined because I have a question. 
Um, and what would you do to use a page to drive traffic through ads if you don't want that page to be found organically, though? Thanks, and have a great weekend. Let's see the answer there. For the first uh, community response um, is Ty D, uh, who said no indexes. Yes, I, I, I'm always, I'm always suspicious when, um, when content doesn't want to be uh, seen by Google. Um, it really does make me wonder whether it should be on the the site at all. That's me being, um, being a purist. But um, yeah, uh, I, I like to see content on, on a website that needs needs to be there. Um, okay, it's in in certain situations where you've you've got potential duplications, uh, no index it and, and do that. But uh, that doesn't doesn't help very much. But uh, I think it needs to be said. You know, this, this idea of putting putting content on a website and then saying, no, don't index it. Not good. Okay. Thank, thank, thank you, David. All right, let's um, go forward, onward and upwards um, to number nine on our run list from Zach Massey. Zach asked the question title between the title tag and H1 tag. Um, Zach said, hi, all. For those who use Elementor, and I haven't heard of Elementor, um, has anybody here had anything to, any knowledge of it? Yeah, it's a, it's a page building plugin for, uh, for, uh, for WordPress. Okay. From what I understand, title tag is Google friendly and H1 is user friendly. Um, when I use the post widget in Elementor, it pulls the title tag. Um, I'm not sure how to make it pull the H1 tag, which is meant for user friendly. It doesn't make sense to me now. I'm sorry, Zach. Yeah, I'll leave it to um, one of these guys to. Uh, let me see if I can pull this apart. I'm not sure. I think I can pull it apart. I'm not sure I'm going to put it back, back together again. Um, title: The idea of title tag, Google-friendly, H1, user-friendly is um, bizarre. Um, this, it, it's, title tag is not for Google. Um, they're, they're both, both title tag and H1 are for Google and us. You'll read it. Um, on the, um, on the Elementor, uh, I have used Elementor. I imagine that, um, I imagine that, um, it's just copying. Um, I think that's what's going on. Um, you should, the basic thing is your title tag and your H1, uh, should be different, uh, in an ideal world. I think they should be different. Um, you should be able to overwrite one of them. You should should be able to write both of them quite quite happily yourself. Um, and if it doesn't work in Elementor, um, put um, put Yoast or another SEO um, plugin on the site, and that will allow you to edit um, your title tag separately from your h1 um, that's one of the things it allows you to do so um stop thinking about uh, title tag being google friendly and h1 being uh, user friendly for seo um that's that's not right thinking um and um you sh if you can't edit these two in any mentor um put a uh, oh yes, maybe I need to use an SEO plugin. There we go. I didn't even read the question. <laughs> okay, that's me done. I think. 
Tim? Uh, okay, thank you, David. All well, right. the thing is, you go you're, ahead. You're, <laughs> so the, the, the name of the page, right, that you're doing, so whether it's a page for a service, let's say boiler repair, that the name of your page, that becomes your URL, and in Elementor, that obviously becomes your H1 on the page, okay? Your title tag uh, is probably easiest to edit in itself, which is, you know, like David suggested, use Yoast or All-in-One or whatever that we you want to use, where you can separately add in a more expanded title tag. Because with these things, so, it, it, you know, something appearing in the search results saying boiler repair by itself and then pulling in the site means nothing. You know, you might want to say, you might want to add into your, into your title tag 24-hour call-out, boiler repair, 24-hour emergency call-out. Your title tag is what is going to, in the user sees in search results, and that is what you need to be thinking about in terms of engaging with them and click through. Something that just says boiler repair, John's boilers. Yeah, doesn't really have the pull as the guy below you going boiler repair, 24 hour call out, um, Biff's boilers. Okay. Um, so just remember, your title tag is what is seen in search results, and that is what you need to, you know, craft to 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 have a to have an actual sort of a better click through. Just because you're position one doesn't mean you're going to get clicks if your title is shit. Excellent, Tim. Excellent. Just looking up some recipes for roasted squirrel. Um, here we are. That wasn't even funny. <laughs> Winston, Winston, close your ears. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, look, um, it's that time again. We've, we've um, answered uh, all, all, we've reviewed all of the questions uh, asked and answered on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. We'll be back uh, at the same time next week uh, to do this all again. But before we go, I must thank your people like Michael Martinez and uh, um, the other people, Brenda Mitchell, and, um, and people that show up uh, week after week, day after day, answering questions as soon as they're asked on the Dumb SEO Christians Facebook group. And uh, we appreciate the contribution very much. And also these three guys, um, Tim Kappa, David Roseanne, Masataki Wasa, um, week after week, um, they um, turn up there. I, I, I possibly, because they don't know uh, um, of anything else to do, um, but <laughs> they're still here. <laughs> Uh, we just anyway, like we seeing think. you, Jim. We do. Yeah, what was that? We just like seeing you, Jim. Yeah. Your, your smiling face. Yeah. I, well, you might I, it be I, in the middle of the night down there in Australia. You get up and you look cheerful. Yeah. It's well, something to aspire to. That's <laughs> what I thought too, David. Anyway, we'll stop this recording, but thank you very much. And, uh, and, this time next week we'll be back here doing it again all right um let's stop that button